Hello, hi. I don't know exactly where to stand. This is probably going to be my new setup and this is like making noise. So I'm like trying to do something with the Fifty Shades of Grey because that's what this is about. My review on Fifty Shades. And it's not really a review of the movie. It's well, it kind of is, but it's not about the movie and about the filmmaking of it. It's about the substance of it. So please forgive my rustiness at this. And here we go. Now, where do I put the notes? I was watching beatboxing. It was a duo. One was a, like a throat singer beatboxer and the other was not human. The notes she hit were just not human. Stuck in my head now. Okay, anyways, so welcome. I'm not like, I'm not warmed up and I feel like self conscious right now. Usually I do this in my basement where no, or when no one's at home, but people are at home and so I feel a little like quiet. But I also learned how to project, which that was what I was trying to do. Moving on to this. Welcome to my Fifty Shades of Grey, Fifty Shades Freed, technically, review kind of quasi thing. First of all, I didn't realize this was the third one and the last one. I think it's the last one. I thought it was the second one because I don't keep track of this. Here's my little history of Fifty Shades of Grey. The movie came out, I came back from the UK from the filmmaking venture that I tried to do. I was like blown away by the cinematography because over there everyone's like film and grainy and like just a look fady and looks dirty. And I come home, one of my homes, and I see this like really crisp, clean aesthetic and cinematography. I was like hooked. I'm like, I know what this movie is about roughly never read the books never wanted to read the books didn't have any intention of seeing the movie but the music and the aesthetic of it just I had to see it so I went to see it with my friend and I was laughing the whole time it was the most ridiculous movie I was like I could not believe this was happening on the plus side there were boobs shown on the big screen in the US now maybe that has happened before but usually it's so censored here yay Puritans Woo! Yeah, go that, but also like this is ridiculous. And also I'm uncomfortable with nudity too at the same time because I kind of grew up here most and also my family is more like that. My mom is more like conservative or whatever. So, well, not really, but kind of, I don't know, whatever. My friend texted me on Monday. She's like, oh, do you want to go see this movie or come see this movie with me on Wednesday? I'm like, cool, yeah, why not? I've been in play rehearsals and work, personal stuff, so... I wanted a break. I'm like, great, I feel good, life is good right now, let me go see this like movie that I don't have to think about it. And then it turned out to be like a premiere and potential stuff. And then I was freaking out. And I also expected something like the first one. Thankfully it wasn't, it was better, it was better, it was better, it was. I decided to do this right now. I've wanted to do it since I saw it, but I've had no free time at all. But also this article on Facebook a couple days ago was scrolling in the middle of the night when I was having some stomach acid issues saw this article and it sounded like it was feminism but it was not <laughs> it was just basically a hate article saying that this movie was a hate movie hate against women movie and I was like Oh, well, okay, interesting take. I don't agree with a lot of things, which is why I'm about to tell you what I disagree with with this movie. Scenes and ideas and thoughts that we are starting to kind of think about differently. But going from that to like hate um, is strong. And that person had that person had a lot of issues with this movie. <laughs> she had a lot of hate. This brings me back to when I had to do a report in psychology class and I chose Freud and I got this book from our library and it had like these like F words and all this stuff and on this page and I'm like what is this about? I know people hate Freud especially women but I, I was reading what he was saying and it was about a sense of humor and I've said this before probably not in moralisms but I've said it in my vlog he was saying that women have a low sense of humor but actually he was saying that that's true 
because of their level of education. More education, the sense of humor is of a higher quality. And the lower education, like the peasants in the olden days, what he was saying, have like, you know, fart jokes and this and that. So it wasn't an insult to women, it was basically a study on education. Women in his time weren't as educated, or like they were just starting to get educated as much as men. It wasn't an insult with women so that's how I feel like this person took this movie instead of actually processing everything they were like nope this is bad because she probably got offended and she has good reasons to but I don't know I disagree with that article I'll just put it that way but again it was food for thought and it was an interesting take on it and so it led me to also put my opinion finally on this. Also, usually I don't wear red lipstick with gray eyeshadow, but I thought, well, this is like more, Anastasia was like more strong and woman. Pink, baby pink doesn't really go with that. So I don't know, I'll deal with it because you probably don't care. Well, the first thing that they actually talked and was an actual scene, not a montage, was of her wanting to be topless like everyone else on the beach. And he's like, no, 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 no. At first, what does he mean? No, no man can control my body. And I agree. He was saying, well, it was because of who he is, people would use that against them and photograph them and this and that. And overall, I don't agree with that at all. I don't agree with his take on it. Dude. If you try to control what I show of my body or try to make any part of my body seem like it's your possession, which is kind of what that felt like, it depends on your culture, but that's not my culture and that's not how I choose to live my life. It is not endearing. It is not like you taking care of me, like, oh, how sweet. You're worried about like my boobs showing up on a magazine or a tabloid or being scrutinized or criticized or used by other guys like no 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 that's not what this is about like, these are my boobs I choose what to do with them and in real life me personally I would not go topless but maybe if I am I've discovered a lot of things that I've taken off of me that I put on from other people from like all these rules and regulations about me about being a girl being a woman someone called me a woman lately oh yeah and I was like Oh, okay, cool. I still think of myself as a girl, but I'm like Britney Spears song. I'm not a girl, not yet a woman. That is probably when you're in like 20s, but that's how I feel right now. I'm kind of delayed anyway. So no, do not control my boobs. Do not take my boobs as your possession. It is not, this is my body. I'm going to do whatever I want to do with my body and you're going to be okay with that. You're not going to like smile and deal with it and accept it, but you're going to like appreciate it and encourage me to do whatever is me you know I don't know that idea of my body is only yours to see is just wrong to me I don't like that I respect if women don't want to show off their body I'm not one to show off my body I wear bras I don't even imagine not wearing bras it's something that since I was little I just I feel like sick about the free the nipple thing that is not what I'm about <laughs> but that's also like an issue for my past so you know like I also acknowledge that so I'm not saying that I'll never be that way but also I'm just trying to say a woman's body is not a man's possession no matter what this might get me in trouble but I am actually so thankful to have had the experience of someone not doing that <laughs> someone to like build me up strengthen me instead of making me feel like a second class citizen that remind you that you are good enough and don't hide you from the world no mushy stuff I'm getting too personal that I mean this kind of links though with the video call so after she did that and he got mad and they're like we're going on the boat and on the boat there was some revenge punish sex because this is what this movie is about and this is what this character is about and yay I disagree with that I cannot get over that I cannot get into that program but it's their choice we'll get to that later however after that came this phone call about how someone blew up something at his company which I still don't know what his company does but I adore that scene and the same thing there was a scene later when the kidnapper oh spoiler alert <laughs> the kidnapper broke in and he came back home they were talking to the police or something or security or something and they were like together and I was like 
go graze both of you because it felt like it sort of felt like empire but you know not dysfunctional and the opposite of empire actually because in empire they like don't get along but they could and they i think i remembered like parts where they did and it was so powerful and having woman as a partner instead of my wife like a possession again i don't know i think in the first phone call she's like oh i, I have some private stuff to say or something the woman and he's like no she can hear it. or i don't remember there was something that was like that i'm like yeah you you got it i mean it was written by a woman in the end even though it has like all these sexist things you know that is like such a turn-on later on there's like the parking lot scene that is not a turn-on a turn-on is when a man is like seeing you as his equal and your partners and you feel just as powerful as he does or as he is and you're in it together there's nothing hotter than being in it together and being partners like fully oh my gosh i'm turning on as we speak turning on turn yeah turning myself on whatever going from like high to low. <laughs> I think this was one of my lowest scenes. I mentioned this in my vlogs. There was this show called Refreshment. It was a Taiwan, it is a Taiwanese show. This guy and two girls, well, they were both working for him technically, but one was his assistant that came from the other like, companies with him and all that stuff. And the other was like his childhood crush, basically. Huh, I just thought of like on a personal level, how similar that is, that movie. Oh, huh, that's interesting, Oh, But yeah, so these two girls could have easily gone against each other. In the US, they would go against each other, but they didn't. The the assistant noticed how he felt about her, about the other girl, woman, they were, yeah, they were women, and she backed off and she helped them and she had no bitterness in the u.s there's so much bitterness and girls pitted against each other and i never felt so connected to girl love hashtag girl love hashtag superwoman hashtag lily sing then in that scene then watching the scene and i was like no 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 this is horrible and the scene i'm talking about is the architect scene where the architect is a woman and she's so flirting i want to know does that really happen in real life i want to see when a woman is like all over this man also this man who is buying the house for him and his wife and is actually more of a gift to his wife than like you know together like what woman what person would be like all over all over and like basically almost practically making out with him but besides that you know whatever he wasn't taking it he i oh my gosh oh my gosh Talk about being turned on. They meet this architect and she grabs his arm. He clearly goes back to his wife and grabs her by the waist. I think, I don't know, to girls in general, that is like a huge sign. Like, no woman, I'm not interested in you. This is my wife, respect her. But it didn't stop there. They got inside and she was talking only to him and touching his hand. He took his hand away. Again, whew, I'm so proud of Christian. Oh my gosh, that was... Like, I was like, pops, yo. That's probably not how you use any of those two words, but you know, whatever. He leaves, and then Anastasia is like, okay, I'm gonna put my finger with my engagement ring right on your plans, and you see it, and I'm going to basically just coyly threaten you. Like, no, you will not step on me to get to my man. That's my man. Again, very possessive, which drives me crazy. All right, here we go again. Oh my gosh, my knees hurt so bad. I'm kneeling right now. Don't go there. Don't go there. Anyway, so the architect thing, the guy already told that woman, woman, because I can't call her dude, stop, I'm not having any of this, I love my wife, I'm with my wife, I don't care about you, back off. And for his wife to have to mark her territory, which would be literally disgusting if it literally happened, I did not take that well. But afterwards, we're talking and I understand, I understand the positive part of that, I understand the way of like, a woman handling her own that's probably not the right phrase just bear with me so many languages and i yeah standing her ground and ha being able to handle anything and you know back to what turns me on which is like having a partner not having to do their work for them that they can handle themselves is probably what i was trying to say so i understand that and i totally agree with that but i don't like women pitted against each other i think it's so detrimental it is horrible and it needs to stop so i don't agree with that scene at all 
all could have been said in so many other ways because the next part of that was him giving her the keys to the car to drive because it's like okay now you've shown me that you can handle this car i'm like what does the car have to do anything with like handling this woman like it's not the same thing at all did a woman write this so that's the next thing driving that's like number five how about, and I know this will sound so hypocritical at this moment in my life, but how about in order to prove to each other that we can handle something or who we are, we just believe that the other person is capable and trustworthy and all this stuff. Like I said, this is more about my core beliefs, not about all the stuff that's been piled on top and I am trying to like figure out, renovate and kind of find myself again. But this is what I really truly believe. Like how, why do we have to constantly prove that we can do this? I I don't like that. I don't like that career-wise. I don't like that in personal life. I don't think that's necessary. I don't like it. Anyways, but it was also my favorite scene in a way because, oh gosh, like if you've driven with me, that's totally me. That is totally me. Except that I don't like low cars. And I don't like that sound. My car needs to be fast and silent and high up so I don't like fall into it. Because I have stomach problems. I have like body problems. It hurts. It's uncomfortable getting up I feel like an old person grunting on my way out of a sports car so yeah but besides that I was like all about that scene I was like yeah that is so me yeah what is not me is the parking lot scene the parking lot scene I did not understand why that turned her on I kind of understand but I don't really agree with it because that was the only scene in the whole movie where she took control and that bothers me but also like weird to me it was stupid I mean but this whole movie thing is stupid because you're trying to say something basically in metaphors and I was never much of a metaphor person I thought I was like oh my gosh no like that's why I hate poetry and I am okay with songs because they you don't you don't hear the like metaphor stuff also in English you don't really have that yep you shut down again the issue with the parking lot scene, no comment on something about that, but the other part of that bothers me that it made me feel uncomfortable is basically what I'm trying to say. What bothered me was that it was uncomfortable for me to see her be in control and the man be submissive for once. It felt unnatural and it made me extremely uncomfortable for her to have an orgasm that way. And that is such a huge problem that has been talked about in the past few months couple months because there was like the whole me too movement about women being sexually harassed but this was this thing about aziz ansari was more about women having control over their pleasure and women being at the mercy of men as far as giving pleasure and when that happens so this scene was so much about that kind of idea of a woman is really in control of her own pleasure it made me so uncomfortable for her to to go there and that is so wrong i mean it is so what we are constantly bombarded with is the guy making the first move the guy having the sex toys and the red room the guy basically being in control of when you're having sex or not and so this one scene was not that I, that's what i have like there's nothing really wrong about the scene it was i wanted to point out weirdness of, behind it for me as a woman girl whatever i am in between hmm. so just to like rephrase it her orgasming orgasm is that a verb her having an orgasm because because she wanted to because she initiated that's what made me uncomfortable with that scene and it shouldn't be that way that is ridiculous that is bad that is not good to have that in our society now number seven or like that um, ice cream i know a lot of people talk a lot about out with cream and all that stuff on your body and in like sexual things no no mm -mm, no I wanted to take a shower so badly after that scene I felt sticky and I just not like it I do not want ice cream or anything edible on me I don't want food on me at all because in my head like food is food it cannot be on my body either way yeah that's not me so that was that was just on a personal note no no ice cream no that was oh that was the most disgusting scene of all the movie or any movie number eight 
you shut down again so if you're off center or whatever i'm sorry i don't know i'm annoyed right now because i'm annoyed the whole thing about having the dynamic they have which is he has rules and she misbehaves if she goes against his rules he will take her to the red room and to punish her i understand in a way but I also, at the same time, feel like it can get very unhealthy very fast. So that's also part of the whole sexism thing. And what I was talking about earlier about a woman's pleasure being her own. Kind of the same thing with her body as well. It's kind of in that territory. It's kind of like fun at the beginning and then like it's a turn off. I, I understand that kind of idea. However, I don't know. Just something about it just does not seem healthy. I don't want to speak too much about it. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not that familiar with every possibility and I don't want to judge people and I'm sure there's ways that that can be healthy but I think the movie itself is encouraging something like abuse and hatred towards women in a way and the way men can get away with things in the name of like oh I'm just a man so this is natural for me to do. So that bothers me. If that's the dynamic they're com both comfortable with, great. And they are in this movie they are i don't i didn't see the second one but she obviously stays with him and loves him and knows he loves her and this works for them i just have a, a huge issue because that this is such a mentality problem that we have it worries me the kind of signal that it can it can give people about what sexuality is and what sex in a relationship is and the roles the gender roles and stuff like that the ending the ending is she basically took it all the way back old school and she went to the red room exactly how he taught her to go and stuff like that. I was expecting, honestly, the twist ending in a way, which shouldn't be a twist ending, where the roles would be reversed. Because to me, that's kind of what I would want. I would want a relationship that is equal even in that sense. I understand, but I don't agree, <laughs> basically is what I'm trying to say. He did his own share of not listening to her and stuff like why is she the only one getting punished maybe it's fun for her too to punish him maybe it's fun for him too to get punished like the whole dynamic just bothers me i'm not into punishment on either side i don't like that being punished in general is not a turn on for me and i don't want to punish anyone else we have in our play there's a scene a slapping scene I don't have to do it but I was thinking like I could never slap someone like no matter how angry I would be I cannot imagine slapping someone I can't kill ants I feel like, distraught for weeks about killing this ant by accident so I'm not into punishing people I don't want to get punished either talking about as far as like the sex toys and all that stuff I feel like it should be equal opportunity and I think it's fun to both be in both roles both dominant and submissive and I don't think it's all well she's dominant because she defies him like okay yes i see that point but no <laughs> i really do mean that it should be equal equal i don't know on my personal level i would want to me it's like fun on both sides so i want to have fun on both sides i don't want to just be stuck in a role in a, a label in a box that's just to me is wrong i'm sorry i'm rusty in my brain and my languages and everything and i'm so i can't focus and yay so bear with me i have only one more point to make one and a half <laughs> the pregnancy which i mean the first thing was oh do you want kids and he's like uh sure totally one kids then she got pregnant first of all let me let me say something let me say something this might not be a popular opinion especially among guys among girls birth control is cool all for it great if you want to do that great but the idea that you need to take birth control because the man needs sex which is kind of how that came across when they're talking about babies i am severely against if you want to have sex you need to have your own birth control as a man actually i think they made something recently but anyways that's another topic or abstain like it's it's really not vital to your life i believe that it's a great part of a relationship when you love someone you want that part and blah 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 i i get that i'm not saying anything against that you're overheating i'm overheating i am very hot right now anyway so i was saying i'm not saying anything against making love or even just having sex just because of the sex 
I'm not, but it bothers me so much and I think it's so very wrong. Again, to control a woman's body because of your pleasure. That's basically what that scene said. Like, no, I don't want to have babies. I want to just have you to myself and I want to do whatever I want to do with you. So be on that birth control pill, which is, I mean, this is what the scene when he found out she was pregnant said. He's like, I thought you were on birth control or whatever. I don't even remember what, but I remember something in the first one about that too. And so that is wrong. That is so wrong. There's no right about that. There's no right about that at all, at all. There's one thing where you both are not ready for kids and you don't want kids and you want to have fun. But even that, I feel, should be at some sort of like, um, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. I'm not religious. I'm not, oh, sex is a sin. Mm -mm. It's just like, I do have a lot of issue about how much it's being used. Sex is used. People use other people for it on both sides both genders all genders both sexes is what i meant all genders and i'm not okay with that it's becoming a norm in a very unhealthy way that's what i'm not okay with it's so different like oh i love this person and i want to have that with them than about being just about the pleasure i don't know how to describe it i hope you get that but that is my take on that there are two things though with the pregnancy one was what a lot of people have issues with with, which is him saying that he doesn't want to share her. I mean, I've heard that before and it didn't really bother me that much and it sort of makes sense. Also, I don't want my personal belief. Well, it's not share it because you are going to do half the work. You're going to be just as involved of a parent as I am. No, 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 no. This is not like, oh, I'm the mother, so it's my job to raise this kid. I don't think so. You're perfectly capable to do everything that I do except to like give them food for my boobs but even that because there's pumps and you can do that too so sharing someone is not a thing because you're both going to be sharing yourselves with this new being and equally that's my take on it what if i am inspiring to do stuff in life so what if i'm busy doing stuff in life i would be called a bad mother if i leave my child with the father and me going on for like a month or three months to do something that i need to do for whatever i need to do i don't believe I should be called a bad mother if that happens. To me, that sounds like a good relationship. It's a good foundation because the man doesn't feel less manly because he has to take care of the kid. Like, I don't know, you like pick up each other's slack. It's, and it's not slack, it's just like you're in it together, so you're going to do life together. It's not like... It's not about roles. I don't, I cannot stand gender roles. So the sharing part, that's my take on the sharing part. The other thing about the whole pregnancy was he went to his mistress. She had issues with that and she retaliated. And I mean, I agree with her that should not be a thing that he should communicate. I mean, this whole relationship they have, like communication is not really the best it can be, which is the number one, I think, I think number Oh my gosh, you're hot, I'm hot, if it's hot. Like physically uncomfortably hot, not like in a turned on way. Communication is one of the top things, if not the top thing, cause, I guess, for divorce, for breakups, for relationship issues. People are not designed to communicate well with each other for some freaking reason. And it wasn't the best thing that he went to his mistress. I think that she handled it pretty well, which is retaliation, which is not the best way to go about it. However, I know that until you feel it on your own skin, like he did, I mean, he did that to her earlier, you don't always understand. Again, yeah. and you try and you understand each other. But if that's not happening, retaliation is the next best thing. And it's not retaliation like you're hurting the other person. You're just kind of letting them know, hey, this is how it feels. And now you can understand and we can like work through that. It is is not a very great way to go about it because people also cope differently with things and interpret things differently so it is not ideal so if you can avoid that I, I can all sort of understand however it's yeah it's not it I, it's damaging and I think it can create vicious cycles that you don't want and it will just it's it's negative it's negative so communicate communicate this is not talking all the time or talking all the time about your feelings but sort of just communicate like hey and also communicate with yourself because a lot of our problems come from not understanding ourselves not understanding exactly why we feel the way we feel or think the way we think I don't know how to explain it it's not the point of this so I'm going to skip over that but yeah communicate 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 One 
one thing that I forgot to mention is a lot of people felt, I, I've read this, how she stayed after he like punished her, like see how it feels, yo, don't defy me like that, don't go against what I asked you to do. And it's like, no, no man, no, you will not control me. So people had troubles with her staying after that and I disagree. I think that she knew where he was coming from, she loves him, he loves her and she knows he loves her. And I think the thing to do is to, again, <laughs> communicate. I think people get on their high horse often and they get into this ideal world where everyone knows the perfect thing to do and say and everyone's perfect. I think love is not about that. I think once you commit to someone, you commit to someone and you work things out and I think it goes both ways definitely. If it is only one way that's not going to work, both ways where you are trying your best to fix issues that you have because reality is we all have issues. It's an ugly word and everyone wants to not have issues and not be with someone with issues but we all have our own and it's about trying to manage them and realizing you have them being aware, awareness is the first step to solving a problem and they're not necessarily problems, it's just, it's a reality. We have to work together in this world. No matter if we're together together or we're human beings that work together or somehow interact in one day. We have to understand each other, be more understanding and be more kind and more loving and come from that place instead of from a place like, oh, you heard me, I'm either leaving or hurting you back. That is not a way to solve anyone's problems or any problem. So overall, I don't think this movie was that bad. I really didn't think about it then or now or after that article. That article surprised me. I was like, what the hell? Heck, like spreading hatred? You're spreading hatred. That is n not productive. That is damaging to the cause of trying to have a more equal, gender equal environment in general. Mm, no, I mean, I accept that's your opinion, but it was it was hateful it was negative it was so negative that article so yeah so i hope you didn't feel the same way about my opinions it's not a great example about a relationship but actually to close this off there's good examples about how relationships should be the one i already talked about the architect the way he handled that was a great example that's what a guy who loves the person he's with would do or any person like if it was the other way around and a guy I would hit on her it would be the same thing she like clearly states like no and shuts that down that's respectful that's loving that's a good thing that we should all take from this movie another thing is like sticking around and working through it and accepting the other person I've been in his shoes in my own way where I've done things that maybe hurt the other person or just looked not so great <laughs> to do or to be they all come from like that little child inside we all have a little child inside that it has been hurt or has not been hurt and whatever that child experienced however it processed those experiences however it found to cope with those experiences comes out the only thing you can do about it is not deny that child or those urges or that instinct is just recognizing where it's coming from and talking about it really and also taking measures to solve that and dissipate that and grow that child to understand that they are are loved and they're safe and secure and whatever they need to it needs to to understand yeah I think it's a great example of love where she stuck around and he stuck around because he could have left he had his own reasons to, he could have left she had a, her own reasons another thing is like the trust and like again like once you're in it you're in it together where she called because she wanted to take out so much money no questions asked and they just had this fight he initially was like are you are you doing this because you need me or because you want to get away from me or is this over it's like I can't answer that I can't talk about it whatever I, I did not write the script I don't know what she actually said what was actually but that was the gist of it instead of him getting so offended and letting the ego take over he loved her enough not enough he loved her and he knew her because he loved her he got to know her and so he felt something was off and he trusted her and he jumped to the conclusion well something's off she must be in trouble because she wouldn't do this and that's another thing she also wouldn't have done that that's another positive thing like I don't know it was like really a good example of love besides the bad sexist stuff which is like sprinkle 
world, it was a good example of love that I feel like we lack in this world. I think we lack a good example of what real, true, deep, loving relationships are. I know I do. I know I do. Like, I, I don't have the worst examples, but I don't have the best examples either. And movie-wise, everyone cheats on each other, everyone sleeps with each other's each other. Like, it's, it's just a mess. And there's so much hatred and so much anger towards each other on TV. So much judgment. You know, like, one, one other thing is that she was independent and she didn't let herself be controlled, establish her limits, but it was more with love than hatred. I don't know how to explain that. So overall, I didn't hate the movie. It wasn't bad. It was much better, excuse me, it was much better than the first one. I didn't laugh at all. I had that huge issue with the architect thing, but that was okay. The one last, very last thing, I promise, it's the environment. The last thing that happened in the movie was him being worried that he would have ended up the kidnapper's shoes if he would have not been adopted to this wealthy family. She said to him, no, because it's it's who you are. Even if you would have been in his shoes, you would have still been you and you are amazing and you are good. And first of all, my first instinct was, what are you talking about? He's great. What was she talking about? He has a red room. He has issues of violence. This is not very off, like, path of possibility for him to do and up the same way if that was his circumstance. My take on all of that was not even like judging about that but also the environment shapes us so much. I cannot stand when people absolve themselves, absolve, what's absolve, absolve themselves of responsibility from like all the shooters that are across the US and people who are doing bad things and evil things and sins. It all gets down to them but it's not just them. You need to also show them better ways to deal with the hurt they have inside and you need to show them better ways to deal with things that they have no matter what it is hurt or not hurt you need to also show them love you are responsible for them as well and that bothers me the environment has a very strong influence on the person yeah not it's not only the environment it's genetics and it's this and that and the way we process things I keep talking about that everyone processes the same situation differently and sees the same situation differently but it is so much the environment that helps or doesn't help that yeah i don't know anyway so this was my 50 shades free thing ideas and it kind of is i guess ideas about relationships but not really but just in terms of what was shown on tv or on the screen about this i guess that's it have a wonderful day and let's go edit this peace love and compassion y'all i don't know what i'm saying there bye bye to kurun mata jane hasta luego pa Oh gosh, I can't move. I really like my my knees and my back so much pain. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh gosh. Right. Yes, that's so